Welcome back. In this video, we continue to look at moments of coplanar forces and would also solve a few interesting problems relating to the topic. Recall from the previous video two key points. One, in order to find moments of forces, the scalar method is much more simpler than the vector method. And two, it is much more convenient to determine moment from the components of a force rather than directly from the force itself. Let's move on to solving the problems. In this problem, we have a square plate of side 2 meters which hangs from one of its corners and a force F of 100 newtons acts on point A of the plate and the force makes an angle of 45 degrees with the vertical, we are required to find moment of the force about point C, which is the center point of the plate. We would solve the problem first by using the moment arm method that is directly from the force itself and then by using the perpendicular and parallel components of the force. Since the force makes an angle of 45 degrees with the vertical, the action line of the force would coincide with this side of the plate and therefore the moment arm from point C would be like this. This is the perpendicular line from point C to the action line of the force and the distance D would be half of the side of the plate and since this is 2 meter, the moment arm would be equal to 1 meter. And therefore, the magnitude of the moment of the force about point C, that is m about point C, is equal to magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance. F is 100 and D is 1 meter. Therefore, the moment would be 100 Newton meter. And since the force would try to rotate the rigid body in clockwise direction, therefore, this moment would be in clockwise direction and this is the answer. Now we shall find the moment of this force using the perpendicular and parallel components and therefore we shall break the force into its parallel and perpendicular components as shown here in this diagram. The parallel component passes through the point C. It will have no moment about point C. The perpendicular component would be F sine 45 degrees and the moment arm for this component would be this distance which is root 2 meters and therefore the magnitude of the moment of the perpendicular component would be magnitude of this component times RCA which is root 2 meters and therefore the moment about point C would work out to 100 Newton meter and this component would try to rotate the rigid body in clockwise direction and therefore this moment would be in clockwise direction and this is the answer. So that concludes the solution of the problem and I would like you to take note of two important points. One no matter which method you use, the end result would be the same. Here in this problem, we computed the moment directly from the force in part A and from its components in part B and in each case, the result was the same. That is, the moment of the force about point C is 100 Newton meter in clockwise direction. And point number two, this was a fairly simple problem and therefore, in part A, it was pretty easy to determine the perpendicular distance from the moment center to the line of action of the force, but that won't be the case in majority of the problems. And therefore, this method, that is finding the moment from its rectangular components, should always be the preferred method. In this problem, a man pulls at the cable in order to straighten the pole OA and if a tension force of 
magnitude t gets developed in the cable, it gets transmitted to the pole 2 and what you see here is the force which acts on the pole at point A. The problem also states that a moment of 5000 Newton meter is required in order to straighten the pole and therefore, we can say that the moment of this force T would cause a moment of 5000 Newton meter about point O. So, our approach for solving the problem would be to find the moment of the force T about point O and equate it to 5000 and then solve for the unknown T. You might have guessed correctly, we shall find the moment of the force T about point O using its components and therefore, we will first set up the x y coordinates x and y coordinates. The slope is given as 5 over 12 therefore, this side would be 30 and therefore, T x that is the horizontal component pointing in minus x direction would be T times 12 upon 30 and T y which will be pointing in minus y direction would be t times phi upon 30. So, you see a nice diagram shown here and the horizontal and vertical components are t x is t times 12 upon 30 and t y is t times phi upon 30. Now, in order to find moment of the force t about point O, we shall sum up the moments of the components T x and T y about point O. The moment of T x would be T x times the perpendicular distance from O to the line of action of T x and that moment arm would be same as A b and A b is equal to 10 times sin 60 this distance is 10 meters and this angle is 60. Therefore, this side of the right angle triangle ABO would be 10 sin 60. Similarly, the distance OB would be equal to 10 cos 60. AB would be the moment arm for the horizontal component TX and similarly, OB would be the moment arm for the force component T y. T x the horizontal component it would cause anti clockwise moment about point O and the vertical component T y would cause clockwise moment about point O. So, the moment of the force T about point O is equal to the sum of the moment of the individual components. So, T x times 1060, which is the moment arm A b for component T x and it is positive because it is in anti clockwise direction. The second moment term is due to the vertical component T y, its moment arm is 10 cos 60 and since it is in clockwise direction, the minus sign, we plug in the values of T x and T y from these two equations and we shall simplify it to get the moment about point O equal to T times 6.07. M about O, M O is equal to 5000 and therefore, the value of T would be M O upon 6.07 which is 5000 upon 6.07 and would equal A24 Newton and that is our answer. In this problem, we have a rocker arm A O B, which is acted upon by two forces. One force F of unknown magnitude acts at point A and another force P of 250 Newtons acts at point B. The problem states that the moment of this force P about point O balances the moment of force F about point O, which means that this rigid body is in rotational equilibrium 
and the magnitude of the two moments caused by the force F and the force P are equal. So, the approach for solving the problem would be to compute the moment of the force P about point O and also compute the moment of force F in terms of F and equate the two to solve for the unknown value of F. We shall be determining the moments of these two forces using their components. So, we will first break up the forces into their horizontal and vertical components like this. We set up the coordinate system x and y axis and break up the force P and F into their components P x and P y, F x and F y. We know the slope of the force which is 3 over 4 and therefore, P x would be equal to P times 4 upon 5 and P y would be equal to P times 3 upon 5. So, we work out their magnitudes P x would work out to 250 times 4 upon 5 that is 200 newtons and P y would be equal to 250 times 3 upon 5 equal to 150 newtons. A similar exercise we shall do for the force F. Since F is an unknown quantity, we shall get the F y and F x components in terms of F. The slope of this force is 1 over 2 and this side is root 5. Therefore, F x would be 2 over root 5 times F and F y would be 1 over root 5 times f, which we make a note of f x is f times 2 over root 5 and f y is equal to f times 1 over root 5. Now, we shall be computing the moment of the force P about point O using its components. The force component P x would cause a moment in clockwise direction and the vertical component P y 2 would cause a clockwise moment. The moment arm for the component P x would be this distance which is B c and B c would equal we know the slope of this line which is 3 over 4 and therefore, this side of the triangle would be 5 and therefore, B c would be 3 upon 5 times 0 0.05. So, it is equal to 0 0.05 times 3 upon 5. Similarly, O c distance O c would be equal to 0 0.05 times 4 upon 5. B c is the this is the moment arm for the force component P x and O c is the moment arm for the force component P y and therefore, Assuming anti clockwise moment as positive, Px times Bc that is 0 0.05 times 3 upon 5 is the moment of the horizontal component and it is minus because it is in clockwise direction. And this is the moment term due to the vertical component Py times Oc, which is 0 0.05 times 4 upon 5 and it is minus because it is in clockwise direction. Plugging in the values of Px and Py from here, we get moment of the force P about O equal to minus 12 Newton meter, which means it is in clockwise direction. Now, we shall find out the moment of force F in a similar way. We notice that Fy passes through point O, therefore, its moment about point O would be 0 and Fx the horizontal component would have anti clockwise moment and the moment arm for this component would be 0 0.06 meter and therefore, the moment of force F about O would be F x time 0 0.06, this would be equal to 0 and the moment is F times 2 over root 5 times 0 0.06. Now, since the magnitude of the moments of the two forces are equal, we shall equate this to this value and 
we get this equation wherein there is a single unknown and this will simplify to f equal to so much which will work out to 224 newton and that is our answer. So that is it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.